Hi, my name is Akash Patel. I'm a trauma and orthopedic consultant based at the Royal Free uh, London uh, NHS Trust. And today we will talk about osteochondral defects around the knee. Now, what are osteochondral defects? So these are bits of damage within the knee joint itself. They can occur in other joints, but most commonly they affect the knee and they affect the ankle. Now, what they involve is damage to the cartilage and the bone. You can have small, medium or large size defects and the causes can be most commonly from trauma. That means an injury to the knee. So if you've had a fall, you can damage part of the cartilage with a piece of the bone attached to the back of it. Sometimes they can have genetic components and this is important to factor in because they can occur in younger patients. So the next question that I get asked is, what are the symptoms? What are the issues with these? So the symptoms usually involve pain around the knee. Sometimes get, patients get swelling. Sometimes they get locking, catching, clicking sensations because there are different types of osteochondral uh, defects or damage to the knee. The broadly speaking, these different types are either displaced or undisplaced injuries. So if they're displaced and the piece of cartilage is floating around, um, or if they're undisplaced, meaning that the piece of bone and cartilage is still in the same place and the treatment options surgically are slightly different. Next question I get asked is, you know, what are the treatment options for osteochondral defects in the knee? So the treatment options with anything are either non-operative or operative. So the non-operative treatments are things such as activity modification, physiotherapy, painkillers, lifestyle changes, all important to, to be mindful of. Sometimes we talk about weight-bearing restrictions as well. The operative treatments are multifold. Usually these can be done either keyhole surgery, that means arthroscopically treated surgically, or open surgery, and that depends on the type and size and location of the actual defect itself. The defects can occur on either the thigh bone, the femur, which is most common, or less commonly behind the kneecap, or on the tibia, which is the top of the shin bone. The surgical treatments using keyhole techniques are either we fix the damaged piece in position with special types of screws or, or darts, or sometimes if the piece is floating around, we remove that piece. The other things we can do are things such as microfracture treatments for these bits of damage. And what that means is where there is a slight damage or a defect within uh, the bone and the cartilage, we can drill holes to encourage bleeding. That bleeding then encourages uh, scar tissue to form and that scar tissue then turns into something called fibrocartilage that acts as a shock absorber. If the defects are slightly larger, then we can also do transfers of uh, pieces of cartilage. So this is called osteochondral um, autograft transfer. So we can take bits of cartilage from other bits around the knee and we can plug that defect. Next question I get asked uh, with these operations are what are the risks, what are the benefits? So generally the benefits are, are, are few. So these include things such as um, improving the pain, improving the symptoms, and long-term giving patients better functional outcomes. The risks are very small, and they include things like bleeding, infection, swelling, damage to the structures around the knee, blood clots, heart, lung problems, anesthetic risk. But usually these are surgeries that we do, or that I do quite um, commonly, and usually patients have good uh, outcomes. The next thing patients ask, what does it involve? What does the process involve? So with any uh, patient assessment, we undertake a patient history. So we see the patients ask a few questions, examine the patient's knees, then we undertake tests. Which tests patients ask? So most commonly MRI scans. So this shows us the anatomy, the type of lesion, the size of the lesion in detail. So that allows us to plan. Then the patient is uh, put forward for surgery. 
depending upon, of course, the patient's uh, wishes. Um, and the patient under undergoes a pre-assessment. So the nurse checks things like blood tests to make sure, make sure the patient is fit for an anesthetic. Patients are usually home the same day. The patient is walking afterwards, usually with some crutches. Patients are e either non-weight bearing, partial weight bearing, or fully weight bearing, depending upon what uh, treatment is undertaken. But usually they are non-weight bearing for a period of six uh, weeks. Scars usually take about two weeks to settle down, and then the patient recovery usually takes at least six to 12 weeks, and then the patient has to have rehabilitation with the physiotherapist uh, as part and parcel of, of the long-term uh, uh, recovery. Usually, patients do very well. Um, the key thing with these uh, problems is the actual diagnosis, and once the diagnosis is made, then we can undertake appropriate assessment and treatment plans.